guys and welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to be doing my Sephora BIB sale part one. I have placed probably six or seven orders since the BIB sale started through till today when I'm filming this. So this is going to be part one of my Sephora haul. If you are interested in seeing what I picked up during the spring 2020 sale, then just keep on watching. The first thing that I picked up is this Briogeo Revive and Repair mini hair set. Both of these products I have used before and they are familiar to me, but I like getting the minis. So in this little set, you get the Briogeo Scalp Revival Charcoal and Coconut Oil Micro Exfoliating Shampoo. And then you also get the Briogeo Don't Despair Repair Deep Conditioning Mask. So we have both of these in there and these are each 30 milliliters in size. That is what the shampoo looks like and that is what the conditioner looks like there. I absolutely love both of these products. If anything, the mask is probably my favorite over the shampoo. I just feel like it makes the biggest difference. It makes my hair so soft and healthy and it just makes my hair feel incredible. To try them out in this set, three uses each is a really good deal in my opinion. That is the first thing that I picked up and all products I will be linking down below as well. The second thing that we have here is a repurchase. This is the Smashbox Brow Tech Matte Pencil. This is my favorite brow pencil that I've ever tried. I've never heard really anyone talk about it. It is very, very similar in shape to the Anastasia Brow Wiz. Typically, I use the Anastasia Brow Pomade on all of my brows, and then I'll use a pencil to feather in the front portion of my brows. When everything goes back to normal and on the regular day-to-day, -day, this is my favorite for penciling in the front portion of my brow, I really like it. Smashbox Brow Pencil in Taupe. The next thing that I picked up is a relatively new product. I actually ordered this just before the sale started and just decided to include it in here because it's new and I have tried it and I have thoughts for you guys. So this is the Tarte Breezy Cream Bronzer in the shade Seashells or Seychelles. It is a really pretty shade. I believe it only comes in one or two shades, which sucks, but that's just the reality of things. I picked up the lighter of the two, obviously, because I am the palest of pale. I'm not wearing this today, but I have been playing around with it and experimenting with it. That is what it looks like there, and it's a really, really gorgeous product. I was a little bit apprehensive of using this because the only other cream bronzer product that I've tried is the Nude Stick. Bondi Bay and that's just a completely different applicator, different formula. So I wasn't sure about this, but I did have the opportunity to see this in stores before they closed. I swatched it in store, all that, and it looked really pretty. So I decided to pick it up. I've been loving it. I think it's pretty good for the price and the amount of product you get. I would definitely recommend this one in Seychelles. It's really pretty. It blends beautifully. Gives a nice bronze to the skin. Isn't too cool toned. Isn't too terribly warm toned. I mean, it's definitely pulling warm because it's a bronzer, not a contour. But yeah, I think this is really pretty. This sponge actually intrigued me a lot more than the Fenty Cream launch. I have not have the desire to pick up any of those products, but this cream bronzer just really spoke to me and I really, really have been enjoying it. The Sephora Hair Hold It Together Makeup Hair Clips. I will take it out of the package so that you can actually see what they look like. These clips have been going around YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, all the places lately. Um, they're just little hair clips that you can use to pull your hair back, get ready, and they don't disrupt your hair. So if you've already done your hair beforehand, which is usually what I tend to do, I do my hair and then I do my makeup. I put these in, clip my hair back while I do my makeup, and then I can take it out and it won't leave a dent in my hair. Usually I clip it where the curl kind of curves, so it's going with the curl pattern anyways. These are really cute Sephora collection, super inexpensive price. Definitely recommend if you're in the market for some non-dent hair clips. Then I picked up a pair of Sephora lashes. They just redid their Sephora collection lashes. Normally I don't go for a lash like this, but I just thought it was really pretty. It's described as a dramatic lash. I haven't tried them yet, so obviously I can't let you know what I think, but generally I really, really like Sephora collection lashes. The quality is amazing and I find that I work really well with the band. I like the band size on them. I'm excited to 
dip into these and create some looks. So yeah, got those in Feisty. Then I picked up a MAC Pro Longwear Fluid Line Eyeliner Gel, and this is in Black Track. This is just their classic black gel eyeliner. I don't know if I've ever owned a black gel eyeliner. I know they've been popular for years. Like Maybelline's is really popular, Bobbi Brown obviously, the MAC one, the Inglot one. I decided I would go ahead and try the MAC one. I've just been finding that, this is what it looks like here, I've been finding that my regular like brush tip, felt tip ones dry out way way too fast and it's not really worth the money. So I've been playing around with new options. It's very black and very creamy. You can use it to get a precise wing if you use like a detailed wing brush or you can go in and smudge it out, which I really like. It smudges really well, very creamy. I haven't had it that long, so I don't know how long it takes before it dries out, but this formula is much easier to revive with some oil, mix it back in like a pomade, reviving a pomade. Much easier to do that with this kind of formula than with a felt tip pencil. So. I figured I would give this a try. I tried it probably two times now and I'm pretty impressed so far. This one is interesting. I need you guys to let me know in the comments about this one. I think they sent me the wrong product, but we'll get into it. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Cheek to Chic Swish and Glow Blusher. Super expensive, bougie packaging. Charlotte Tilbury is one of my favorite makeup artists. I love her products. I definitely want to pick up more products from her brand in general. Um, but basically, I have previously owned this blush. I picked it up when I was living in England, brought it back home, broke it within the first, like, week of being back home, which was super devastating to me. This was when we didn't have Charlotte Tilbury in Canada, I believe. Finally got around to buying a new one. This is in Love Glow, but this is the thing. I don't think this is Love Glow. You guys can let me know, but from what I remember, because I previously owned this exact blush, Love Glow is a much brighter pink. As you can see, the ring around this is very peachy, and then the circle in the middle, the pop part of the product, is a little bit darker. With the Love Glow that I remember owning, it was a darker color on the outside and a lighter color in the inside, and also it was a more fuchsia, cool-toned pink, whereas this pulls a little bit peach. The packaging itself says that this is Love Glow. The back of the product itself says that this is Love Glow. This isn't the shade that I thought I was getting or that I remember Love Glow to be. So either way, I think I'll probably keep this blush because it is a pretty color, but I want to go ahead and purchase that more pinky fuchsia one. So I don't know. Weird situation. Let me know what you think. Next, I have a repurchase of my favorite favorite product ever. This is one of my top three favorite most raved about products on my channel, I would say. This is the MAC Studio Fix Powder Plus Foundation in NC15. This is my all-over face powder has been for probably consistently like four years now. I have so many empties in my drawers here that I need to do a back to MAC and get like a lipstick or something. This is my all-over face setting powder. For my under eyes, you guys know I like to use a loose setting powder like Cody Airspun or the Maybelline Fit Me, but for all over my face, always, always, it's MAC Studio Fix. If I have it in my collection, I was without it there for like two weeks and I was really upset, but it's back. I have it back. I absolutely love this powder. It gives such amazing coverage, such an amazing finish, blends gorgeously. I've gotten so many people onto this product. My mom is also obsessed with it. Trust me, if you've never tried this, you need to. It's magic powder. So I decided to go ahead and pick up the NARS Natural Radiant Longwear Foundation. This has been talked about on YouTube for so, so long. I picked this guy up in light to Mont Blanc because it's a described as their lightest neutral to warm undertone, which on camera it does look fairly neutral, but I tried this once since I received it and it seems to go a little bit cool on me or oxidizes in an interesting way. Granted, I only tried it that one time, so I'm not 100% sure. I definitely need to play around with it more with different primers, powders, concealer, all that stuff definitely affects the way the foundation looks. Obviously, working at Sephora, it's good for me to know more about high-end foundations. In my loves list on Sephora right now, I also have the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Foundation. I have the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Foundation really want to try the Fenty Hydrating Foundation. So if you've tried any of those three, 
let me know your thoughts. Let me know if you think I would like them based on my favorite foundations and stuff. The last product that I have is a fragrance, specifically a summer fragrance. I had my eye on this for a little while and then I saw two people haul it in their VIB haul videos or recommendation videos and it just sounds divine. I'm not a fragrance person. Previously, I have owned and loved um, Flower Bomb, Flower Bomb Blue is also really good. Black Opium I love. Gucci Guilty I have and love. That one's a little bit different. I decided to pick up the extension of I guess it's Huda Beauty's line. Huda Beauty has recently come out with a skincare line called Wishful I believe and then also a fragrance line called Kayali. So this one is in Vanilla 28. It is an Eau de Parfum and it is 50 milliliters. Fragrance nodes on the back here are Vanilla Orchid, Tom Tonka Absolute, Brown Sugar, Amber Woods, and Musk. This is what the bottle looks like. It's a really, really gorgeous bottle. Super pretty packaging for summer as well. I love vanilla, just classic vanilla, but I don't like something too sickly candy sweet. So this is a lovely smell of vanilla without being too sweet. It has a lot of warmth to it. I think it's a very girly scent, but a more grown up girly scent, which is is typically what I like. I would say black opiums like that. I would say that flower bombs like a more grown up but like still sweet scent. So this is definitely within that family. The packaging is just gorgeous. I can't wait to display this on my counter. I'm so so excited to get part two so that I, I probably have as I said the exact same amount of products waiting to come. So definitely stay tuned for that. Definitely be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you did enjoy it as well. Please do subscribe if you aren't already really does help me out. I am so, so close to 4,000 subscribers and I will have a big giveaway for that. So stay tuned and subscribe if you would like to be a part of that. That is everything that I have for you guys. As always, have an absolutely awesome day and thank you so, so much for watching. Bye!